Hello everyone, Jekyll here. I hope you're all staying safe and healthy during those not very good times. I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but I'm terrible at scheduling and planning. So that's why I asked people on Twitter, link to my Twitter is in the description, what I should talk about today. It was actually a tie between the top 5 legal loops and the story about my first Yu-Gi-Oh tournament. So I decided about the Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments which means I'll be talking about my first tournament at each level. That would be local, double CQ, and nationals. Before we start, I'd like to also ask you to like, share, subscribe, and do the all good YouTube stuff. Now, back to your irregularly scheduled programming. We'll start with my first locals. It's July 2015, Necroz format. Together with two of my pals, I decided to travel 180 kilometers or 112 miles for you Americans to take a part in a local tournament a few towns over. The shop tournament was taking place and was infamous, mostly for its cleaning standards or lack thereof. No, seriously, you could smear fresh poop on the wall in the toilet and that would have been an improvement. I won't name the place so they won't come after my ass, but uh, yeah, I also wasn't there since, so I cannot tell if there was an improvement or not. You might be wondering what deck I decided to run. Well, the only deck that was somewhat competitive for me at the time was my Cobalt Loop Synchro deck. For the love of me, I cannot remember the specifics of the deck, so I won't be able to provide you the deck list. Also, at the time, deck list wasn't required for the tournament, so I didn't bring any. And I don't have any anymore. The focus of the deck was very simple. Get Imperial Iron Wall on the field, get as many Quibble Hedgehogs in the grave, as well as a Plug Spirit Zombie. So with both Plug Spirit Zombie and Quibble, they can be infinitely revived, as long as Wall is on the field preventing any banishing. So with TG Hyper Librarian on the field, which can mitigate Plug Spirit's cost, it was pretty much infinite synchros. And to get to Imperial Iron Wall, I used Curry Bandit and Cat of Ill Omen, and for the milling I decided for focused milling instead of power milling, so I used Mathematician and Armageddon Knight. I was also playing a lot of darkness so I could chain wall to it. There are all the additional cards and no means of banishing anything. When it comes to the overall performance, it was mediocre. My first round duel was against one of the Necros players, and that duel ended with me winning 2-0. The player was actually very bad. I mean very, very, very bad. The only play he did that I can remember was activating the fulfillment of the contract on a Necros monster he used as a tribute for one of the ones he had on the field. I was a bit pumped after the first round, but I knew there was more waiting for me. And that's when shit all happened. The deck is heavily reliant on special summons, and I was playing a Winda out in the form of new Spatian Grand Mall. I was unable to deal with Winda in the end and lost the match. That's when we go to round 3. A duel against Necros. Again. My opponent was, and still is, a decent player. At the very least, he's better than my upon from round 1. I was quickly demolished in game 1, and that's when he said something that I'll never forget. I'm not citing, I want to see what your deck is capable of. To say that I was pissed, uh, that would be an understatement. He was looking down on me, and that's when I made the decision. Even if I cannot win this match, I'll force him to side against me. And foresight did. Within a few turns, my opponent was staring a field of TG Hyper Librarian, Stardust Dragon, Beals and Quasar. Not to mention the wall, which limited his searching capabilities. He scooped and he turned to his side deck. I lost game three, but I still did feel like a bit of a winner. The final duel of that day was against a Noble Knight player. His deck was consistent solely of the cards from the box, which came out at the time, so all of his cards were their Platinum Rare. I won game 1 with the regular Synchro shenanigans pretty easily. In game 2 I decided to go for my side strategy, which was a bit of a smoke screen. I swapped from Synchro Spam to Rank 2 Spam. It made game 2 a bit more challenging, but I still came out on top. In the end I ended 6th 
in the tournament of an astonishing number of nine people with my standings being 2-2 so not bad for a first time I would say and that's how my very first local went now let's get to double CQ Now it's time for my first tournament of a higher level, my first World Championship Qualifier. That one took place in October 2015, so still in that cross format. It was actually my fourth tournament overall, so I was still green. The deck I took with me for that one was my Unicorn Control. It was bad, and I mean very, very bad. In round one, I faced Ritual Beast, which was a tier 2, tier 1.5 contender at the time. I actually won with relative ease by manipulating my hand to match my opponent. In round 2 and 3 I faced Necroz and was crushed without remorse. The final 4th round was actually kind of fun because I dueled a guy who watches my stuff. It was nice. He still beat me though with his 100 deck and the great amount of rank 4 plays he had. So yeah, my final standing was 1-3. I ended 14th out of the 15 people present. The guy who was last was playing Super Heavy Samurai and just like me went 1-3. I was ahead of him only because my win was in an actual duel and not due to a buy thanks to an odd number of players. To say I was demolished was an understatement. I still took all of that experience to revise the deck and make it a bit better. My next WCQ which took place three months after was a bit more successful. Okay, so strap on to your butts because this is going to be a long one. My first and at this point in time the only time I went to nationals, the wonderful May 2017, the middle of the zodiac format. Just before that grass looks greener got banned. Good times. Funny thing about Polish nationals, they're open. Due to the community being so small, there is no system that dictates who can go or not, there are no invites. Therefore, if anyone's watching and missed his or her nationals, come over to Poland, those are open, no invite required. Just pay the fee for entering and get loose. After all those tournaments I went to, I was smart enough to actually document everything regarding the event. When it comes to the deck I was using, it was a Buster Blader build. The video about it is available on the channel, link is in the description. There were 59 people taking part in this tournament, meaning 6 rounds of Swiss before a single elimination. This was the biggest tournament I actually went to. I'll give you the full round down with all the tiny details I remember and have in my notes, not to mention all the fun factoids that were happening at the time. So let's begin. I traveled to Wuch, the city in which the event was taking place, a day earlier with my girlfriend. She didn't want to let me go alone and sit home while I'm in another city. I love this woman, even when she pisses me off, so she decided to come along. We pretty much spent the first day sightseeing, shopping and sleeping. We took a very early bus. On the day of the actual event, I left her in the biggest shopping center in town, the Manufactura shopping center. Since she found a bunch of grown adults playing card games all day quite boring. Can't imagine why. Anyway, Manufactura is seriously ginormous, with 270,000 square meters or 2,906 square feet of shopping space, it's the Poland's second largest shopping complex, and she decided to spend her entire day over there. Anyway, back to the card games. My first round opponent was playing Grass Paleo. A tricky deck to deal with, no doubt about it. However, I think the main deck Kaijus and Dragon Buster Destruction Sword make the game one rather easy. In game two, I sided in Necro Valley and Royal Decrees, so I had some outs to stop him even more, and I opened Necro Valley. I activated ASAP, so my opponent wasn't able to draw any outs to that bullshit of a card. And once he did, I flipped Royal Decree, securing my win. Round 2 was a bit of a traumatic experience, since that was me facing True King Dinos. I lost that match almost instantly. The only highlight is that I used Destruction Sword and Fusion to get rid of Lagia. However, I had no further plays to out that full dino board. It was hopeless. I have to say I almost cried when I met my third round opponent due to the fact he was also playing True King Dino. 
that PTSD just didn't go away. Fortunately, the guy was not as good as my previous opponent, who, by the way, got to top four in the end of all of this, so I was able to win that quite easily. The most noteworthy action he did during the match, which actually made me call him not a very good player, was him declaring an attack during the very first turn of a duel. I know people can get stressed during such high tier events, but please don't forget the basics. My round 4 opponent was playing Grass BA. Just like Grass Palio, it's a tricky one. In game 1, he quickly established Beatrice and we were in a bit of a stalemate. I was I wasn't able to defeat Beatrice and he wasn't able to summon monsters from the extra room because a cute dragon kept coming back. He conceded after a few turns of being unable to do anything. In game two I quickly established a Buster Blade lock and put Hot Red Dragon Arch into Biz out as an addition. Go me? Round five. Kaiju Zoo. A very bad, bad matchup. I think mostly for thanks to those main deck kaijus. In game one, I broke it very hard and I wasn't able to do anything also dried and in game two, I decided to make the most brilliant, genius, big brain play possible. I set a glow bulb with gamma in my hand making me unable to activate that guy's effect, which was pretty much my only form of disruption. To add more salt to the wound, I top decked Max C to say I was crushed. That can be quite accurate. In the final round of Swiss, for some reason, I faced Teller Knights. I bricked very hard in game one, so yeah, I was beaten by my own Kamangas actually, which is quite hilarious. I didn't break in game 2 and 3, winning me the duel and I ended 4-2. 11th place after the Swiss round which did give me the invite for the European WCQ, but wasn't enough to get me to that single elimination, which only the top 8 could attend. I was unable to get to the European WCQ, mostly thanks to the cost, not to mention the fact that it was a month away, so I was unable to secure everything in a timely manner. When I left the venue, I went ahead and grabbed my girlfriend from the shopping center so we could return home and get to the bus. Getting to the station was a bit tricky due to a marathon which was taking place at the time. The route was a giant circle and we were smack in the middle of it. Fortunately, we were able to get on time and take a nap in the bus of my new mat in tow. That would be it for this trip down my memory lane. I tried recalling as much as I could. I did have a few notes for some of those tournaments, so that definitely helped. What are your memories from your first tournaments? I'd love to hear about them in the comments below, of course. So, thanks for watching. And bye-bye.